Good morning. In today's video, I'm going to take a look at share investment, investing in shares. And what's prompted this video is I was on YouTube there last week or the week before, and I came across a guy before who claims to have made a lot of money day trading shares. And he has quite a lot of followers on YouTube and on Instagram. And quite frankly, I think that there is a lot of questions to ask in relation to what he's claiming. I've done a little bit of research myself, and quite frankly, I don't believe a word of what he's putting forward. But rather than just knock him and knock what he's doing and so forth, even though I may have to do that if it's a scam, if it's a scam, I'm not saying it is, but the odds are, quite frankly, that it is not all it's cracked up to be. But in this video, I want to look at investing in shares and rather than just dumping on the other guy and what he claims, I want to put forward what I believe to be a sound investment strategy for shares. Now, it's not investment advice as such, it's not financial advice, I'm a solicitor, but I have made some investments that have produced a fairly good return and I have actually been studying shares and share trading and share investments for a long, long time because my original degree from UCD back in the early 1980s was actually in commerce, not in law. So I have an interest in the area. My particular philosophy is the same philosophy as that of a guy called Peter Lynch. Peter Lynch, if you have a look at the book there, um, he's a legendary fund manager. He's got a fund called the Magellan Fund, I think it's called. This book is a Wall Street bestseller called Beating the Street. And this book is Own Up on Wall Street. Both of them are by Peter Lynch. And both of them put forward a strategy that I follow to invest in shares. And Lynch himself follows this particular strategy in his fund, in his investment fund, the Magellan Fund. But just as a matter of when I was doing a bit of research, when I came across the other YouTube video about the day trading, I actually just pulled out these two books, which I bought, I'd say, 10, 15 years ago. And I just picked up this one and had a look in the back to see what it said about day trading. And it says, by the way, the odds against making a living in the day trading business are about the same as the odds against making a living at racetracks, blackjack tables or video poker. In fact, I think of day trading as at home casino care. The drawback to the home casino is the paperwork and so on. In other words, most serious professional investors would say that day trading is a mugs game. Now, I do propose to deal with that particular individual and claims that he has made and is making about day trading and about the returns that you might get from it. But rather than, as I say, just dump on him first, I'm going to put forward my strategy. And I'm going to put forward the strategy that I picked up from Peter Lynch, which has served me in good stead. The strategy is fairly simple. You buy shares for the long haul. And you buy shares that you understand in businesses that you understand. And obviously the businesses must be businesses which sell products or services that basically you're able to get your your, your mind around and that you probably come into contact with on a daily basis. And what I propose to do in this video is to set out some shares or four or five shares from my portfolio, which you can see on the screen there, which will explain exactly the thinking behind the shares that I picked and the uh, value that I've got from them and obviously how I go about picking the shares. But basically, the fundamental is you hold the share for a long term, not for a short term gain, not even for medium term, but you do need to hold them long term. Long term, you will do well. And 
secondly you keep your costs to a minimum you don't incur ridiculous costs turning over shares and buying and selling on a very very frequent basis and thirdly you buy shares in companies who are doing stuff or selling stuff that you understand okay so on that basis let's have a look now and just see exactly have a look at some of my shares and I'll explain to you what I did and why okay this is my portfolio here the first share we're going to take a look at is alphabet alphabet is Google Alphabet is the parent or trading company or the holding company rather for Google and you will see there that I have a profit of 2300 euros or whatever in Alphabet in Google but it is Google and it is important to understand that why did I buy shares in Google to be honest with you it's not a rocket science it's a no-brainer to buy shares in Google but in my particular situation I on a daily basis use Gmail I use the Google suite of tools and apps in my business I use YouTube which Google owns I use Google advertising because I advertise on YouTube and as I say I use Google Drive then in my business to run my solicitor's practice so I use a huge number of I use Google Analytics and um, I use the Google Webmasters Central and so forth the bottom line is I use Google products all the time on a daily basis I have built my business quite frankly using Google products and therefore when I go to buy shares in Google I know what I'm buying because I understand the model that they use is essentially an advertising based model they use Google search when you go to search for stuff nowadays everybody is on the internet everybody is on the interweb everybody is searching for stuff and everybody is googling for stuff so Google has a preeminent position in search and it has a preeminent position in online or digital advertising so I use Google tools every day of the week and therefore it's a no-brainer for me quite frankly to buy Google shares and as you can see there I'm showing a nice tidy profit of 2000 whatever it is 23 to date so that's the first one we're going to have a look at the second one I'm going to have a look at is another share or another company rather whose products I use on a daily basis and you probably do as well okay here's the second share I'm going to show you today and explain to you why I bought it this is Amazon everybody knows that Amazon well everybody knows what Amazon does we've all probably used Amazon and availed of Amazon for a while I bought the shares um, in the last three years or so and as you can see there there's a nice profit of 4200 that is unrealized and quite frankly it will be unrealized because I will just leave it sit because I buy the shares to hold them why did I buy Amazon well, for obvious reasons, everybody is buying online nowadays. Everybody's buying stuff off Amazon. Also, I have a Kindle device. I read a lot of books on my Kindle. And when you get older, you prefer to read books. I prefer, rather not people, I prefer to read books on the Kindle. And the reason is because my eyesight isn't what it used to be. And reading physical books is more difficult now simply because the font is only a certain size. Whereas with a Kindle, you can make the, you can make the font bigger. So I read a lot of books and I enjoy the Kindle, I enjoy Amazon and then I'm selling books of course on uh, Amazon myself. I sell my employment law, uh, law books on Amazon. I sell another book about property development on Amazon. I sell another book about getting clients online and digital marketing and online marketing. So I think of four or five books for sale on Amazon. But the bottom line is I know and you know what Amazon is and what they do. Amazon also own Audible. Audible is the app that you can use. You can listen to audiobooks. I listen to audiobooks every day of the week. And I also sell my book, my Employment Law in Ireland book, on Audible. So again, 
what do I know about Amazon? I know enough that I know their products and I know that they have grown substantially and significantly over the last number of years and that they are a good long-term investment because people are going to buy stuff online with great frequency and enthusiasm and let's face it Amazon uh, have turned out to be a good to be a good uh, investment so let's see now what else have we got next one you see there on the screen is CRH CRH obviously Cement Roadstone Holdings. I understand what they do. They are a long established um, company, blue chip Irish company, and obviously they haven't done too well for me, but that's fine. I'll just sit tight and wait. The stock price there, as you can see, for three months um, has steadily climbed, and over six months it's steadily climbed, or six months it's not so good. And over a year then it's obviously come back a bit and that's probably reflective of the construction industry generally and it's also reflective of the COVID-19 situation because obviously there's been a bit of a dip there in the last little while and you can see the um, lowest point in the last what is it one year is in between March and April and that's probably when COVID hit and just to put in context the COVID situation this portfolio that I have has shown a very, very nice profit, a uh, very nice return over the last, I think, two and a half or three years. And I think it's running at around about, let me see, I think it's 27, 27 or 28 percent before dividends. Uh, about two and a half years I have it. And that's after the shitstorm of COVID-19. If COVID-19 hadn't happened, then it would be showing a significantly higher return but it did happen and yet the return on the shares is still in the order of I think it's 27 to 30 percent and that's without realizing or including the dividends that I receive in the calculation and just to put it in context today is the 5th of July so the prices you see today are 5th of July it's after the COVID-19 pandemic has hit and we're beginning to try to come out of it and we're beginning to try to recover but that is the situation uh, if, for example, I did this video in January or February before COVID-19 hit, I'd be showing a very, very good return on the share investments. Okay, other shares that, trans that I've uh, invested in include, I said, I mentioned Kerry Group, you've Kingspan. Okay, another share I've invested in is Ryanair. Ryanair Holdings. Obviously, we all know what Ryanair does. Ryanair are down now from my perspective because of the COVID-19 situation. And you could take a view that it's a good time to buy Ryanair shares. That remains to be seen. But long term, in the long haul, I think Ryanair will be okay. And I think they have something like 14 billion in cash on the balance sheet. So if things don't return to normal or if there's a new normal which will see a shakeout in the airline industry Ryanair with 14 billion in cash is in a strong position to be one of the players one of the main players the other thing is I know Ryanair are very active in terms of managing the situation as best they can with wage cuts redundancies and so forth and I would have a perspective from the queries that I receive in my daily practice as a solicitor about wage cuts, redundancies, layoffs and all that sort of thing. And I would have a perspective or an insight into how active they are in terms of managing the situation as best they can. Bottom line is new normal or old normal, if you're 14 billion in cash, you're going to be a player in the airline industry, in the travel industry and I can see people having an appetite to travel again to Europe and other places that Ryanair travel to. Perhaps not quite the same way as before, but certainly I can see um, I can see a return to something approaching normality. But obviously it depends on your view now as to how exactly, to what degree we return to normal and to what degree normal the new normal compares to the old normal, but I still think Ryanair will be in a good position. Anyway, before the COVID-19 situation hit, I was uh, very happy with them, obviously, and um, COVID-19 has hit Ryanair hard, 
but I think they'll be back and I'm holding the shares again as I say I'm repeating myself but I buy the shares to hold them and unless there's a very very good reason for getting out of shares I just hold them and hang on this share here snap this is one of my favorite shares and you can see why down there at the bottom it's showing a profit of 3200 um, I mean I've practically I think I doubled my money on this bloody thing um, very very good return on it this is snapchat okay and the key thing here is to understand why i invested in snapchat i invested in snapchat when the share price was very very low and the reason i think it was about three years ago and the reason it was very low was because instagram were after coming along and basically copying their business model and st stealing their cheese but i have an 18 year old she's not 18 now she was 18 then who a girl here who uses snapchat all the time and i was forever quizzing her at the dinner table about using snapchat and why she still uses it and does her friends still use it and i kind of took a punt on it then on the basis that even though instagram was coming and even though instagram was kind of appeared to be destroying snapchat and even though snapchat's share price had tanked i looked it up and it had transpired that they had some sort of a gadget like a virtual reality device in in uh, development and that was looking promising but regardless i was asking my 18 year old daughter at the dinner table why she was using snapchat and were her friends using it and they were and she still is and that snapchat has turned out to be one of the best investments i've made in the last three years or so as you can see there so that's snapchat and that is we all know what snapchat does we all know that there is a an app on your phone and you know people like to use snapchat especially younger people and that's why i invested in snapchat and finally twitter i also invested in twitter and you can see down there at the bottom twitter has shown me a very nice profit as well over a relatively short period of time and for a relatively small investment and I bought Twitter when Twitter hadn't made a profit. And Twitter was operating for years and had gone to the market and had been a startup and had failed to show a profit and so on and so forth. And yet I bought a share. Why? Because Twitter is kind of addictive. For the people who love Twitter, um, it is addictive. And you either love Twitter or hate it. And I kind of took a punt on it. And then with your man that absolute head case in the White House in the United States using it so extensively and giving it free advertising I thought it was um, going to be helpful as well and then sooner or later I thought that with the growth of Twitter and the sort of addictive nature of it that sooner or later they would show a profit and I think six months or twelve months after I bought Twitter uh, it showed a profit so it's shown a nice return as well now i have other shares as well plenty of other shares that haven't done well that have tanked quite frankly and haven't done so good but i'm not concerned about that i'm concerned about having a good broad basket of shares in companies who are doing stuff that i understand and i'm concerned about holding those shares for a good period of time for the long haul and I know in the long term that they will do well. And I know in the long term I'll get a good return. Now, there is an alternative. There's an alternative way of sharing or investing in shares, I believe. And it's a very, very popular method of investing in shares. And that is to buy what's called a low cost index fund. In other words, you don't have to worry about buying or picking individual shares. You don't have to worry about balance sheets, understanding profit and loss accounts or price earnings ratios. You don't need to understand any of that. All you need to do is buy an index fund, a low cost index fund, and the index fund will have a share or shares in practically every share on the stock exchange. It could be, for example, the Standard & Poor's 500 in the United States, which is the leading 500 shares in the United States. The S&P 500 is the index fund uh, in those shares and if you want to buy into that you get in with a low cost 
a low cost fund you could buy shares in the german market for example you could buy shares in the irish market uk market you know europe generally or whatever but if you get a low cost index fund you're buying into the market generally you're getting a very very broad spread of shares that is going to produce a very good return over the long haul as well in fact that will produce if you buy into an index fund of um, with low costs you're going to get a return of at least nine percent per annum over a period of time well you used to get that it may be lower in the future now i've explained to you why i pick the shares i pick and i've explained to you also the alternative is not to pick any shares to actually just pick a low cost index fund and buy into the market that way why would i do it the other way the way i do it to be honest with you because it's more fun but from a pure perspective of earning money earning a return on your money then the um, index fund low cost index fund is the way to go but i enjoy picking the shares i enjoy sometimes saying you know uh, listening to takeover talks about a particular share that i might be in and looking at the share price rising or i might enjoy getting a, a return out of the likes of snapchat there or twitter which at the time I made the investments in them were kind of contrarian. Ryanair, I'm going to buy more shares in Ryanair because I think they will come back. Uh, they're down now at the moment, but as I say, I'm in it for the long haul. Uh, they're a good company, they've plenty of cash, and I'm going to buy Ryanair again. And um, the other ones then, I've got Kerry Foods, I've CRH, I have Glanby, I have all of those, Arista. A lot of the food companies from Ireland were hit badly by uh, the COVID 19 situation, but that's the way it is you take the rough with the smooth you take the good with the bad and that's it hope you find this video useful watch out for the other video i'm going to do about day trading and what i believe to be a very questionable situation and uh, potentially one which would uh, lead people to believe that they're going to make a lot of money day trading when my view is and the view of peter lynch mcgillan fund is that you might as well go to the casino and put your money on black or red. Hope you find this video useful. If you do, I would appreciate if you gave it the thumbs up down below. Thank you.